from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show today. Not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Here we are, night before a holiday, and uh, you know, traffic is lousy. Many people got out of work early today. Many people are going out shopping. Not many people taking anything seriously, and we're not either. For God's sake, we can't wait for the holiday to get here any more than you can. But, of course, you may have left work early today, but I did. I'm here. <laughs> We're still working away here like busy little bees. But um, frequently, when we are the day or night before a holiday, we realize that your head is somewhere else, and so uh, we make things easy on you. We're not going to challenge you too much this hour. And I thought it might be an interesting time just to give you an hour of... Uh, really, a bonus hour of wide open telephones, an opportunity to call in and talk about anything that's on your mind. Uh, it could be anything at all. It could be anything we discussed on the air this week. It could be anything that you think we should have talked about that we didn't. Maybe there's been something you've just been burning to say and you haven't had the opportunity. It could be something totally off the beaten track. I don't care. All we ask is that you be absolutely fascinating at this time when people need a little entertainment. You know what I'm saying? Big holiday, airports are jammed, many of you are sitting in traffic waiting to get to a gate at an airport. Oh, LAX tonight here in Los Angeles, brutal. Ever had to do the go to the airport and pick somebody up game uh, on the night before Thanksgiving? Good luck to you. I gave that up a long time ago. Told my friends how to get a cab at the airport. Bottom line. But, uh, of course, uh, we, we feel your pain and we know you're out there. And, of course, the longer you sit in traffic, the better it is for my business. Bad as it is for you. So you can call up and talk about anything that's on your mind as long as you're absolutely fascinating in this bonus hour of wide open telephones. This pre-Thanksgiving edition. All you need to do is call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. And I literally mean anything at all. So start dialing, and then we'll start going to the phones. We're going to try to get as many calls in here this hour as we possibly can about anything that might be on your mind. God only knows what that can be. Let's see what it is. Tom, Tom, Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Oh! You curl my toes. Ah. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. It's the day before Thanksgiving. And we give you one bonus hour of wide open telephones here. At 1 800 5 800 Tom, that's our telephone number. Yeah, a while back you were talking about people with uh, MySpace accounts, how they couldn't, you know, they were wondering why they wouldn't, didn't get jobs and stuff like that. Can you hear me? That's not what I said. Well, a while back, it was something that with MySpace they had, they couldn't get work. Or or, pe or employers would look no, at No, I said it. that employers look at your MySpace page. Exactly, exactly. And if you are confessing things about yourself, they know what you're saying, and then they don't hire you. Exactly. Um, I want to to a little kiss what happened with me. Well, nothing negative, but I am uh, applied for L.A. County Sheriff's Department. And when my background investigator um, got together with me, they asked for my email and stuff like that. And we actually 
he went through my MySpace and went through my friends list asking how I know these people and stuff like that. And, of course, anyone who knows anything about MySpace knows you don't know 80% of the people on there anyway. Exactly. Well, in my case, uh, people that I had on there, I actually knew those people in person, not someone I just met off the net or something, you know, and I, uh, I liked their picture or something. But Okay. Actually, yeah, he actually went through it and, you know, looked at everything on profile and the comments and stuff like that. But, you know, it just kind of had me worried, you know, why would he be looking? But then again, you know, it's a... Law enforcement, they got to know who they're taking in. I think people are stupid to put private stuff about themselves in a blog or oh, on yeah. Facebook or MySpace. You're insane. Oh, yeah. You're just putting yourself out there like you're a victim, you know? Right. Yeah. So ever since, you know, I was stupid, I had MySpace, nothing nothing bad about it. I didn't have anything bad. But ever since then, it's been deleted. I haven't been on there back since. Good for you, Greg. I mean, really, yeah, there's other ways to pick up chicks. You don't need MySpace. No, don't need that. As long as you're successful and you know what you're doing, you got game. Don't need MySpace or anything like that. You are right. Yeah. Well, Tom, take me out uh Long Beach with a with, uh, shotgun. Long Beach style? Yeah, Snoop Dogg at the end with oh, okay. an AK-47. Oh, and people call that Compton style, but all right, Long Beach oh, style. Okay. Here you go. No. Beach. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's John on the Tom Likas show with a bonus hour of wide open telephone. Hello. Are you there, uh, John? John, this is my story. Actually, uh, I've been listening to you for a couple years already, and uh, this is the first time I call. Uh, this the situation started with me starting uh, dating a girl that she's a single mom. Now, what have I told you about that? Yeah, you said do not ever date a single mom. But, but you knew thing. better, didn't you? You knew better than I did, right? Yeah, I know. But this is what you, it is. All right, uh, so, Albert Einstein, go ahead. Everybody wanted to be with her. It's kind of she works with me. So At strike two, like, by the way, what do, I tell, what do I tell you about dating women who work with you? It's not good. Right. But you did that, too, because you thought you knew more than I did. Isn't that right, John? Not really. I don't know what more than what you do, but... Well, then why did you do hot. what I told you not to do? She's really, really hot. I don't it's care. Really do, yeah. what, do I tell you there are exceptions if a girl is hot? Okay. Do I tell you that? Uh, I didn't hear that part. Right, well, that's right, because there are no exceptions, John. Yeah. So this but is you went ahead, you went ahead and did it anyway, didn't you? Yes. Two but things I told you not to do. Everything that I'm doing with her, everything in our relation, it's my way or it's the highway. So everything I tell her, she do it. Everything, it, like, you know, if I tell her to go on top of the building and throw yourself down, she'll do that for me. Right. Okay, so it's not like... So it's all going great. Well, thank you for calling. Okay. Right, it's going great, right? No, it's not. Right now, I'm kind you of... You just told me she'll do anything you want. My... Well, that's great. So, what I'm saying... So, that... you called to tell me that you're deliriously happy and everything is perfect, correct? I'm happy, but I don't want to be with her for the rest of my life. Why not? Uh, because I don't want to get married, because, like kind of, I believe, with not getting married. Right. So, so what? I have a house of my own. I have a drive right. my car. I don't right. say, so. so I have uh, enough saving for 1K, all the things that you've been talking about. I have a decent job. I make about 60 plus a year. But, like, again, I don't want to share all that with anybody. All right. So what happened? I'm sorry? So what happened? Nothing happened yet, but now I'm at a point that I want to get out of it. But I don't know how to So do get it. out! Like, how? We work together, so how I do well, I Well, I, uh, 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 you, you're smarter than I am. You must know how to do that. Because I, I told you don't do that, and you ignored what I said, went ahead and did it anyway. Yeah. 
So oh. you obviously don't need my help. You went right ahead and did what you wanted, despite the fact that I warned you not to do it. Yeah. Now you're finding out why I told you not to do it. True, true. But you did you care when I was giving you the advice? No. I did. I, I, I did a lot of... No, you didn't. Did no, of, I, I don't care I what you did. I a brand new car. I don't I care what you did. did. You're not no. supposed to penetrate a single mom, and you are not supposed to have sex with people you work with, period. Yes. Period. I don't well, care. I, 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 I don't love, care I, what you did while you were with her. I couldn't care less. You weren't supposed to be with her, period. Yeah, it's because you can't whole, control it now, can you? It's out of control, isn't it? Uh, it's kind of because at the beginning when it started, it was like in my side on her side, I should have been like maybe one time thing or two time thing, and we were not even serious about anything, you know. But sex was good and everything was good, and then we kind of start stop seeing other people. What do you mean you kind of stop seeing other people? You had a monogamous relationship with a single mother who works in your office. Strike three. Yeah. So what's the So you're not as smart as you thought you were, are you, John? No, I'm not. You're an idiot, aren't you? I wouldn't say so, but I would say so because you did what I told you not to do and now like 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 a little infant you're calling and you don't know what to do now. And I don't want to stop it. I know we're in the same office, and now I'm dating her. And now, what happens if we stop seeing each? Oh my God! I could, I could, I could simply end it by good. On her Go right ahead. See what happens. Because, good luck. Because we agreed, if ever somebody cheats on the other, then it's going to be end of it. So that's it. So you, I could just cheat on her, and that's that's going to be so. That well, that's a great way to end it. That's very adult. So you're going to have to cheat on her. And then make sure she finds out about it so she'll break up with you. How's that going to be working in the same office with someone you cheated on? I don't know. That's her problem. No, it's your problem. I don't know. How could it be my problem? Because, because Are you an idiot? Are you pretending to be stupid or are you as stupid as you sound? No, I'm not stupid. I'm just oh, yes, you are. You're going to have to see this woman in your office all the time. Okay. And she's going to see you and the people you work with and the people you work for. She's going to be telling everybody all about you. Telling them what? I mean, about me what? That we've been together? Everybody knows that we've been together. That you cheated on her? Uh-huh. So, I mean, it's maybe it's the other way. And you think that's good? You think it's good for your boss to know about your person? You think it's good for your boss to know things like that? I mean, there is no such a policy in our office. That That's not my not point. Me. It doesn't have to be a policy. Okay. We don't have a policy at the Tom Likas show not to hire women. We just don't happen to have any working here. Okay. You see? Like, even if my boss finds out that I'm with her or I broke out with her, that's not going to change anything about me. It, you know, know what it changes? Thing. I'm going to tell you what it changes, and you are re a lot more immature than you think you are, John. Here's what it changes. It changes people's perception of you. And when the boss is considering you for a raise or promotion or a more prominent role in the company, he's going to think, this is a guy who can't control his personal life. But how if you perform everything? I do everything. You don't need a policy fire. in the office uh, to affect the way people perceive you. And the way people perceive you will affect what your future is in that company. Okay. It isn't all about policies, John. Sometimes people just don't like what you do. I could transfer out, or I could go different. Like if it has and then what? Practice, and like then and then and then the human resources person at your office says, "Oh yeah, he had to leave because he got into he was dating some chick in the office, and they 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 had a male, ugly split, and she's telling everybody he cheated on her." And yeah, that's all you need is that kind of uh, stuff following you around, which it will, and you're an idiot for thinking it won't. I mean, everybody makes mistakes. I agree. I don't that's, care. That's... I don't care. You didn't just make a mistake. I warned you not to do this, and you ignored my warning. 
I don't know how I did it, but it just happened. No, no, no it didn't just happen. You made it happen. I don't know how. But I mean, well, you uns. Let's let me tell you how it happened. You pulled your pants down. You unzipped your fly, and then you proceeded to move forward. That that's how it happened, John. It did the it, the 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 arousal fairy did not arrive at your crotch at three o'clock in the morning. You made it happen. I don't know. So do you have any advice for me? Anything that I could do? Or stop being an idiot. Yeah. How about stop being an idiot? How about well, start? Ta- actually- how about start taking responsibility for stupid ass things you do? I am taking responsibility. No, you're I'm not. Don't start telling me you don't know how it happened, or you did. You had nothing to do with it, or it just happened. It didn't just happen. You made it happen. Okay, let's let's say that you say that I made it happen. Okay, so I made. No, it no, happen. it's not that I say. No, it's not that I say you made it happen. You made it happen. Okay. Let say it to me and mean it. Say I made it happen. Okay. But say it. Listen. Let me say it. Something. Say it. I made it happen. Okay. You made, made it, happen. it happen, right? You made it happen. So now that you made a stupid decision and did stupid things, things that you had the ammunition, you had the information, you were properly warned not to do them, but you went ahead and did them anyway because you thought you were smarter than I was, now you want me, the idiot whose advice you ignored in the past, you want me to get you out of a jam now. Isn't that right, Ja? Sure. But also... I'm not going to do it. Goodbye. Tired of hearing you but, 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 but. Tired of it. Neil, on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hello, how you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay. That's good, that's good. Um, I, I am calling you today because I have... A crazy relationship problem for you that I think you can help me with. Okay. All right. So I dated this girl a, a year or two ago, and like you know, we had a good relationship and all. And then she ended up breaking up with me um, for for some stupid reason. I forgot about it because that's how stupid it was. And then like so, like a year or so went by, and like we started talking again, and like she realized you know that she still had feelings for me and all. But why are you know, having a girlfriend at this age? Why? <laughs> Um, uh, you know, I just like the feeling, you know, of being in a relationship and having someone. Why do you me. enjoy that? I do. Why? I, I just do. <laughs> You're not mature enough to have that kind of relationship. Uh-huh. And there are no benefits to having it. Okay. Yeah, but like, um, like she, this girl still says she has feelings for me and all, but like she has a boyfriend and she, and she doesn't know who she, she can, she, she wants to break up with. And because you're all with. just a bunch of little boys and girls who have not matured yet. That's why this is happening. Okay. Okay. She's not mature enough to have a relationship with one person, and neither are you. So she, so I should just pretty much just forget about this girl. Is that what you're saying? I hit it and quit it now and then. Yeah, see, I mean, it never even got to that point. Like, it, it was, like I never even did anything with her like that. I mean, like, cause I went out with her for like six You mean you haven't even had minutes. sex with her? No, I went out with her for about... So what like, makes her an ex? Yeah, I know. She's my ex right now. And like, I'm what makes... She's out. not your ex. You never had sex with her. Mm. She's your ex what? Ex-pal? She's my ex-girlfriend. Ex, but she's not your ex-girlfriend. Your girlfriend is a person you have sex with. Mm-hmm. I mean, because, like, <laughs> I, like I, I really love this girl, Tom. Like, this girl, like, pretty much... Well, you're, you, again, because you are immature, you're like a little boy writing your first Valentine's Day card, you don't understand how it works. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, like, pretty much this girl's, like, just playing mind games with me. Like, she says she wants that's to... That's what, that's what little games. girls do with little boys. Uh, so, I should pretty much just forget about this girl, huh? Correct. I well, and, Tom, and forget about having another girlfriend uh, that you don't have sex with after that. Mm-hmm. All right, well, thank you, Tom. I appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, you, 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 you don't appreciate the help. You completely think I'm wrong here. It's your mouth. We're on the air. Oh, so, sorry about that. All right, 
right. Well, thank you, Tom. Um, if you can, can you take me out with a bong toke? Sure, I can. Thank you, Tom. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. Oh, Jesus Christ Almighty, James. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Uh, <laughs> at the next room, Tom. Uh, are you calling for a satellite phone or a, a tin can tied to a string? What are you calling from? <laughs> Man, just regular cell phone, well, company phone. So, Sounds like crap. Uh, sorry about that. Is it clear enough to... to uh, I can get a question in. Let's just keep it short. All right. Uh, coming up in January, I'm uh, getting a raise, which will allow me to max out my uh, 401k. I was wondering where I should go from there. Do you have a Do you have a Roth IRA? See, that's what I was thinking, but I, I wasn't sure. I, I haven't really talked to a banker because, I mean, in my opinion, if they were really that smart with money, why are they bankers? So I wanted to talk. To with someone who actually had some experience dealing with some money. All right. Well, you uh, want to start a Roth IRA. Okay. Uh, what's the difference between a Roth and a, a regular IRA? Uh, a, a regular IRA, uh, they deduct the $4,000 from your taxable income. So if you had an income of $50,000, you would be taxed on 46000 if you deposited the maximum of $4,000. A Roth IRA, you would pay into it with after-tax dollars. So if you made fifty thousand, you'd be taxed on fifty thousand. But the difference is, with a traditional IRA, when you withdraw the money when you retire, right. they take taxes out at that time. Right. Whereas in a Roth IRA, oh. you can withdraw from it tax-free. No matter how many millions of dollars you make in your IRA, it's all tax-free down the line. Right, so you don't have to worry about taking a big hit at the end, right? Correct. So. Okay, excellent. So ta the much. next place you go is take your next $4,000 and put it there. Make sure also you have no credit card debts. No. No, no. car loans. Yeah, I have one car loan, but I mean, that's no. because it's necessary, and that's, that's the only debt I have. You know, try to avoid paying interest on anything but a house. Right, right. So... Okay, hey, thanks a lot, Tom. Oh, also, hey, one more thing. A couple of weeks ago, that there's a Persian chick that called in, and uh, I wanted to thank you for defending our beautiful country. Because there's a lot of men and women out there who have sacrificed so that that bitch and her wife can come here and pursue the dream. And I want to thank you for doing your part. Anytime, James. <laughs> All right, have a good one, Tom. Thank you. You too. I'm helping the good folks of Iran. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Danny on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's cracking, Tom? Happy Turkey Day. Somebody's ass is cracking as soon as I get out of here. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Tom, I have concerns over here on this fine station they broadcast you on. Where? Where's that, Danny? I'm calling from Hawaii. All right, so it's KWAI. You got it. Tom, they've they've said same owners, same everything, same uh, format, but now they've preempted you with Butchie Ball and um, uh, Division Three basketball. And it appears uh, from complaining to the owners that uh, it's going to be this way for a while. Now, chances are that the radio station was, was paid uh, by the people who produced those games uh, to put them on the air. Well, that that's probably true. Knowing that uh, you know most of the shows are infomercials, and it's it's extremely lame. But um, Tom, the um, the fire department, the lifeguards, and the police department love you over here, and uh, we don't want to hear butchy ball, women's any type of sport on this uh, station. Butchy ball. I have, I've never heard it called butchy ball, but uh, that's pretty good. Butchy ball, Tom. Obviously, you haven't seen the University of Hawaii. Uh, Rainbow Wahine, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty butchy. 
but um, you can't compare him with the, the Rutgers uh, folks. <laughs> You're not gonna that. you're not gonna hear me doing that here. I can tell you that right now. Tom like it. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 Man, you know, you need to exterminate this broad on the line, man, because all I'm hearing is me, 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 me. Oh, we're on our phone, man. She's the kind of chick that you talk about all the time, man. It's the Tom Like It Show. Bonus edition of Wide Open Telephones on the Tom Likens Show from Hollywood this day before Thanksgiving. At 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Justin, on the Tom Likens Show, hello. Tom, how's it going? Great. Tom, I'm a little bit nervous. I'm looking for your uh, perspective on my situation. All right. I'm 28 years old. I've got two good friends, one who just got married this last summer, another one who just popped a question a couple days ago. He's going to get married next year. And uh, my girlfriend and I, we've, we're, all, we're all good friends, these couples and everything, and uh, we hang out a lot, and it's coming down to the point where I'm the next one, you know, and I'm getting pressure from my girlfriend, kind of, and my other friends. But um, I don't really feel like I'm ready for it, but I know at some point in my life, I'd like to get married and have a family. But right now, I don't know. And I just kind of want your perspective. My girlfriend is uh, 22 years old. She she's she's too young to get married, too. I, you know, I kind of agree with that theory, but she's kind of worried. She's about to graduate from college, too. And uh, she, she she's, like, real family-oriented, and she wants to start a family. And she's concerned if she starts a family too late. I too late? What, waiting till 25 would be too late? I don't I, I, I don't think 25 is too late. I, I don't know for women what they think is too late. I think the closer they get to 30, they start getting scared. Well, let me tell you something. First of all, if you're going to have children, you should be with a person at least five years so that you have a running start and you know that you're going to be with that person for a while. That's pretty good. Are there any characteristics you should look for in a woman to make sure you don't avoid any of the problems that I hear about on your show all the time? Uh, yeah, no bitching, no high maintenance, no nagging, no complaining. Nobody wants to change you in any way, shape, or form. Any way, shape, or form. Doesn't Correct. every woman kind of want to change a man a little You bit? won't tolerate it, and if she stamps her little feet, you have a problem. <laughs> That makes good sense. And you, the thing is, you have to step up to the plate early on and nip this stuff in the butt. I understand that. So you have to tell her you are you. She better love you, who you are, because you're not changing anything. You're not going to stop watching football or smoking weed or whatever it is you like doing. You're going to be doing it, and there's going to be no changing it. And she's going to be stuck with you the way you are. Sounds pretty good. What about, I think I know what you're going to say here, but what about moving in with her to test it out maybe before that five-year point you just talked about? Uh, again, I would not live with anybody before marrying them. I would not. There's no benefit to you. Yeah, I know there's no benefit to me there. Well, I cut rent in half, but besides that, what about testing the waters? I mean, why would you want to get married and then just jump into a situation? No, here's that? what I would do. Once you have a commitment to get married, then move in for a defined period of time. Uh, by the way, you should better understand right now, you're not getting married without a prenuptial agreement. No, I and, totally and, agree with that. And no, but you have to make sure she totally agrees with it. Yeah, I think she does because I've, I've... No, I've... no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I'm... if I hear the words I think, I, I know you're in trouble. I know, well, Tom, I haven't, I, I haven't, pers we've talked about marriage a little bit, but... It's, you can't talk really... about marriage without talking about the prenuptial agreement. I brought that up before, but right now in my life, I mean, I really don't have a huge amount of money to lose. I so really you're telling me you're going to be a loser for the rest of your life. No, and no, the future, I'm going to be a winner right Well, now, that I'm is why you need a prenuptial agreement. But a prenuptial agreement... You can't only it. sign a prenuptial agreement before the nuptials. Yeah, but doesn't it just protect what you have before you no, get married? No, it, it can protect everything you ever make if you write it that way. You, you're telling me that when you get married, I live in California too, you're telling me when I get married, 
that everything I grow together with this unity, that I can keep a certain part of it. That's no, you can keep all of it. All you have to do is say that. And then follow the instruction of your attorney, which would include things like having separate checking accounts. You can also have a joint account to pay your bills and things like that, but a separate checking account for the money you make, you keep it there. That sounds, that sounds pretty reasonable. You can always buy property under your name and your name alone. Deed it yeah. in your name alone. Yeah, I understand that, but it'd be a lot more beneficial to buy it with somebody else. No, it wouldn't. Well, it'd be it'd be easier to get approved for it. Like if I was going to buy a house. If, the, if, have... you, if, you, if you have trouble getting approved to buy a house, you shouldn't be buying a house. <laughs> you got a point there. You got a point there. But in California. That's why we're in all this trouble in the real estate business right now. Because people think like you. I think I think that I don't want to pay rent, that I want to at least put some. I don't care what you want. You can't. If you can't get approved for a mortgage, you can't afford to buy a house. Period. Yeah, but I'm not going to argue with that. If I can't get approved, you're right. And if I get approved for some sick loan... If you I... need someone to co-sign your loan, you're a deadbeat. Yeah, makes good sense. Makes good sense. So five years, Tom, um, bring up the prenuptial agreement right right from the bat. Don't let her change me. And uh, just uh, go from there, huh? Yes. And you are not going to be doing anything financially together at all in the meantime. Anything. I agree with that. I don't want to get mixed up. At all. Ever. Don't buy a condo now to live with her in. Don't be uh, buying her a car, helping her with school, or any of that stuff. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm good on that level. One more question, Tom, because in my future, um, in the next couple of years, I want to I want to buy a franchise and hopefully grow it and, and own a, a couple franchises in my own business. If I get married in that period... She, 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 we've talked about this, where if we get married, she would want to work in my business. Does that sound like a good idea, working No. I didn't think so. Is it possible for that to even work, or is that just problems waiting to happen? Well, and look, it's possible to jump out a 16-story window and survive. <laughs> yeah, that's Yeah, true. it's possible. It's possible you're going to win the big spin Saturday night. No, I'm not going to win that. It's possible. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. No, it's possible. <laughs> no, I don't think so. When you ask if something is possible, that's not the question you should be asking. You should be asking about whether something is likely. Is it feasible? Yeah, is it likely? How about that? Is it likely? You'll, no, it's unlikely to be a good idea. Yes, it's unlikely. <laughs> Makes good sense, Tom. That's kind of what I was hearing. It sounds like you just slow and steady and feel it out and make sure I protect myself. I mean, right? don't let your loins govern your business decisions. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. All right, Tom. Well, thanks for taking my call. Tom, can you blow me up? Of course I can. Here you go. It's 1 800 5. Hello. Do you have a dial tone fetish over there? What's going on? Hung up on the guy and still on the air? 1 800 5 800 Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to, oh, Frank on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing tonight? Doing great, Frank. Oh, that's good to hear. Hey, you know, I've got kind of a dilemma here. I've got a, I've got a lady who's going through a, a divorce, and um, her ex is happily married now. And I'm wondering what happens if, if I were to marry her, uh, right now I'm making um, a little less than a... Are know, you recording this conversation? What are those tones I'm hearing? Oh, sorry. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm making less than... Uh, you, you work for the FBI? What are you doing over there? <laughs> are you wiretapping me? What is going on? No, 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 no. It's my, my battery phone, my phone. Oh. Okay, so... Um, the, That's what the, the FBI tells people, too. Yeah, well... <laughs> uh I'm going to be making six figures here in about a year. And I'm wondering, if I marry this woman, is my income going to be figuring in with her income as to paying child support? Because right now she's paying child support on three girls or two girls. One of them's moved out. And I wonder if I'm going to be part of that. You could. That has happened. Why do you need to be married? 
Well, I think I found um, a, a good woman, but... So she could she make a great girlfriend. Why do you, you, forget her for a second, you, Frank, why do you need to be married? I'm 42. I'm, uh, she's, got, she's brought her life together. And... 42, my life is over. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen. I'm waiting to die. Don't make any difference. Yeah, Not having any yeah. fun anymore. Life is over. Well, you know, true. might as well just start digging my grave right now because I'm getting old. <laughs> uh, so I thought I might as well get married. You know, because sticking a butcher knife into my heart was a little too painful. Yeah, I have no kids. I've never been married. and You, you don't know. need to be married, Frank. Yeah. You know, and, and like I said, you know, you know, about a, year, a year from now I'll be doing okay. You sound like a beaten dog, Frank. Uh, you know what? I have been around. I've been beaten, and, um, man, I don't know, man. I'm just... You know, I, I just got off the phone with her, and I told her, I says, I says, well, what's gonna, uh, what am I gonna do? Support you? I'm gonna start making this much money, and where's my money gonna go? These are your kids, and I says, you know, I love you, but this son of a bitch is, or this guy's gonna come after me because uh, he's gonna add in my income. Because right now she's a waitress bringing in maybe four or five hundred dollars a week. By the way, and you're going to get tagged anyway. Even if he doesn't tag every child support, she's going to want you all to go on vacations together, or to dinner together, or to the movies together, or do other things together. And these girls going to need to go to college, of course. And on her income, she can hardly afford to send the girls to college. And that's where Mr. Six Figure Frank comes in to help out. Very true. Uh, what are you, insane? <laughs> uh, well, sometimes I've been told I don't, I don't, not every screw in the, in the shed is tight. Yeah, well, you better tighten up. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I mean, are you kidding me? She's going to tag you for everything. She's already trying to tag you for stuff. And, you know, she comes off as a good woman and all that stuff, but, man, you know, I listen to you, and, and oh, boy. And I'm 42. God, I've been out with a lot of different women, a lot of losers, man. And, you know, I just don't want to get back into this same rut. But at the same time, is there's no possible way I can come up with a prenup to keep me out of paying her... Um, the child, her child, child support thing is very... Here's the deal. They, you won't pay child support, but they will base her child support on total household income. Oh. So, so it's not going to matter it, anyways. No, but it could... It, so they could say to her, what does she make, 500 a week? They could say, okay, your child support now is $500 uh-huh. because of your total household income. So it would totally come out of her paycheck. And then, of course, she's going to be coming to you saying, they took my entire paycheck. Now I need money. That's oh, how yeah. it's done, you see. Yeah, then I choke. That's what's going to happen. And if you think she's not going to try to hit you up for college money, wake up, pal. <laughs> oh, boy. Is there a way you can take me out on a quiet desert island? <laughs> Sounds to me like you've been taken out already. <laughs> Oh, you're probably right about that. Frank, you don't need to be married. By the way, she really needs to be married because she needs your money, Frank. So true. Security. Well, if she loves you, she'll continue dating you the way she is now. And that's what I told her. I said, you know, if you really love me, why wouldn't you sign a prenup? And oh, and she wouldn't up. sign a prenup. Oh, and she you didn't tell me that, but she wouldn't sign a prenup. Well, I, yeah, I, I, you expect me to do that? And I said, she well, wants your I money, said, Frank. I said, do you love me or do you love my money? Isn't it clear now that she wants your money? Well, hmm. You know, it's... You mean you're not sure? You've got to be kidding. The Tom Likas Show.